Welcome to another episode of the Spiritual Transformation Podcast. I'm your host, Mary Beth, and today I have a guest with me who is an energy healer, a life enhancement guide. Did I get that right, Chris? Yep, you sure did. And he's also a specialist in trauma and addiction recovery. Chris, thank you so much for being here. Welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. So I appreciate it so much. So grateful. You're so welcome. We're, we're, we're just so like-minded and I'm, I, I love that. This is actually your, your returning champion, right? Because you've been on here before. Yeah. And yeah. we talked about relationships last time. Yeah. Um, conscious relationships and, you know, t- you, you cover it all because you cover your relationship with yourself, having a conscious relationship with yourself. And um, that's one of the things I wanted to ask you about. But first of all, First of all, I wanted to ask you, because some of my viewers might know, but some of them might not. And I want to get your definition anyway. What is alchemy? Okay, so everything I say is my reality. Um, So people may not resonate with, with my definitions, the way I see things, no hard feelings. This is a multidimensional universe. We're all meant to see and feel a little bit different. Um, so I'm going to, I'm going to start with that first. Um, and alchemy to me is unity. It's, um, um, it's, it's unconditional love. It's, it's the totality of everything and being able to, um, you know, if we look at energy, you know, electricity, you know, because it's, it's in the 3d and, and, and it's easier to talk about, um, there's, you know, our batteries have a, a negative and a, a, a positive polarity, but where they come together, that's where the energy is created. And to me, that's alchemy is finding that presence, finding that that space to where um, it's almost neutral in a, in a sense. And then the meaning that we give it is 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 how we move through it. Yeah. Um, you know, um, you know, we, we've talked about laws of, of attraction and everybody talks about that. And, you know, an interesting perspective that was given to me was that um, time and space move through us. So as the energies, circumstances, things move through us, uh, it's neither good nor bad it's it's neutral but it's how we're conditioned to think to feel to believe um that creates that meaning which gives us either a conscious response or an unconscious reaction um it's not good or bad it just is right so when we notice that we're being the the word you know the buzzwords trigger when we're noticed that we're triggered and we and we fall into an unconscious state of anger or sadness or you know grief or any of the, you know happiness, I mean it can it can go all the different um, um, spectrums of emotion because actually emotion is energy, you know, e emotion. Um, so it's moving mm-hmm. energy and how we label these things helps us define our reality, but it doesn't create our reality. Right. Like, yeah, it makes a lot of sense because at the end of the day, all anybody's seeing is their beliefs, their personal belief system. That's how you walk out into the world. And that's all you see is your beliefs. And then the meanings that you attach to things is actually what's going to cause your reaction over the actual uh, incident that happens. Because that's why we see two people who are, you're a trauma specialist. We see two people and they might have been involved in the exact same trauma, a car wreck or something together. And one of them that it changes their life forever. And they just get stuck in this, oh, this accident, you know, destroyed my life. They get stuck back there. Well, mm-hmm. the other one didn't attach that, that level of meaning. They might've actually used the accident to, you know, um, grow and become uh, someone who helps others who have survived traumatic incidents like that, right. you know, while the other one gets stuck. So it's right. really, I think that's what you're saying. It's about the yeah. meaning we attach to things. Yeah. So it's not really good or bad unless until we do that, until we decide this is my judgment call. <laughs> well, I mean, and I, I believe if if my memory serves me correctly, Brandon Bouchard, um, if I'm saying his name right, that was his big 
wake up call was in a car accident and I woke oh. him up and, and, you know, then he started doing what he's doing. I uh, feel like I know his name. Is he a coach? Like I, he is, he's like a big coach. I mean, he was oh. like a marketing guy and, you know, every now and again, he'll pop in back into my reality, but okay. Um, I guess I didn't ever follow him, but I, I have heard his name before. Yeah. He's like a, he's like a younger Tony Robbins. Motivational you, speaker. Type. Yeah, yeah. Growth and, you know, all that now, um, you know, a lot of us um, people that have been in the industry for a while, um, as the market changes, we rebrand ourselves with words mm -hmm. um, to, to stay current with where people are. Um, so really we're not remain saying, relevant. <laughs> yeah, we're not really changing what we're saying, but yeah. we're changing what we're rebranding. Yeah. Words, um, which is just rebranding. Mm -hmm. Um, it's just marketing, you know, which is just sharing from our heart or from our head. Right. And, um, and, uh, you know, how, how we help or we hurt, um, depends on our intent and how it's received. Yeah. Um, you know, and, and, and we can't always control how it's received. We can we can try to be as mindful and as conscious and as aware and kind and, um, you know, all that. But as as we've all had this experience within our own lives and with other people, um, being held uh, accountable for something um, can sometimes be challenging to the ego. Yeah. Or the limited self, you know, Absolutely. the limited identity. Um and, and so, you know, going back to alchemy, if we can alchemize our higher self, our soul self, which comes from source, which is a state of neutrality, is a state of un uh, unconditional love, and merge that in a healthy manner with our ego, then, yes, we have our identity, and yes, we are coming from a state of unconditional love, um, and, you know, trying to... Um, you know, stay in that flow to me means, you know, allowing the totality of our emotions. So it's not creating, um, um, uh, I don't want to get angry. I don't want to be sad. I don't want to have, you know, bad things happen to me um, because, you know, um, or challenge, you know, challenges or whatever. Those are opportunities for growth, you know, absolutely are opportunities for growth. They're tests. I don't think we can create without having contrast. We have like, that's like, by definition, we don't know what we really want until we have what we don't want sometimes, you know, like, but right. your background and what you were saying earlier about the battery. And then the fact that, that we're both into Bashar makes me want to bring up the yin and yang symbol. Like, cause right. we, you know, I think I shared a video with you that I was like, oh my gosh, this is the best way I ever heard it explained. And you kind of already touched on it, but but it's it's just another way of explaining the same thing. The yin and yang, you've got your dark side and your and, and your white side, uh, mm -hmm. the light and the dark, but then the, the light has a little bit of dark and then the dark has a little bit of light and then that neutrality in between where they join, like you were talking about, but like Bashar said, you can always use the dark to get into the light and you can always use the dark. I mean, the, the light to get into the dark too. It works right. both ways. And I think people are get really stuck on the labels a lot, mm -hmm. but you would label yourself, speaking of labels, a non-dualist. Um, sure. Would, would you? <laughs> I, mean, yeah. that, I, I think that would be the most appropriate term yeah. that I've found. I think so too. From yeah. what I know about you, you seem to fit right into the definition. <laughs> yeah, you know, I've which is I've, good. I've, which you know, I've been coaching for about ten years now, um, guiding. You know, again, labels, right? So yeah. I was, which uh, you know, then I'm like, no, I'd rather be a guide because a guide really is 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 more of a different. To me, it's a different reality. Um, so. Um, but uh, one of the things I said, even when I owned the talent agency, is it is what it is. It's not what it's not. And we can make it mean whatever we want it to believe. Yeah. Or, you know, want it to mean. So um, if, if we're not, if we're afraid of adversity, if we're afraid of growth, if we're afraid of contrast, if we're afraid of unconsciousness, we're going to create these alibis and these um, 
victim mentalities and blame and shame and projection and all those things to keep us from holding ourselves accountable and responsible Mm -hmm. for what had happened and then doing something or being different to use that as a growth opportunity learning growth experience you know um one of the things that you know we hear a lot is this happened to me right instead of for me right and if just that little switch this happened for me you know like and it's tricky in the mind, right? And the mind needs to have some kind of contrast to know what the meaning is because mm-hmm. up without the opposite of down has no has no directionality. Um, so we're, you know, I'm not I'm not saying it's all good, you know, and then there's no bad. It's just those are temporary states and you can you yeah. can identify them, you can acknowledge that yeah, that happened. It wasn't pleasant, mm-hmm. I, you know, but because of this unpleasantness, I learned more about myself. I learned about my true meaning of who I want to be, how I, you know, work with people or how I communicate with people, how I walk with people, whatever. And, and, and not in a professional sense. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's challenging for me. Um, to see a lot of people walking around calling themselves healers and things like that, but they're only doing it for a fee. You know, we heal people on a daily basis with our smile, with our kindness, Mm -hmm. with our gratitude, with our appreciation, Um, being able to hold space for someone to just share what they need to share with no uh, guilt or judgment and just saying, you know, I hear you, you know, that, that was something. Now, what are you going to do about it? You know, that, that that usually comes down to, you know, it's like, okay, that happened, you know, um, and that sucked. But I, you don't live there anymore. Right. You know, you, now, now you live in the now. The alchemy of non-duality is we're always in the now. Time, space moves through us. Mm-hmm. So we can, we can, we can, we can go backwards in the, the past or we can project into a future. Um, and that's what makes us creative creators um is is having that 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 gift you know th- that's what differentiates us from all other animals yes yeah. we're still animals. we're still nature you know we're not separate from nature um we are part of nature we just have uh developed through evolution i guess or through consciousness however these skill sets to be able to have logic and reason um which allows us to uh move out of our circumstances. Yeah, for sure. And speaking of nature, I've been rude. I haven't introduced my co-host, TJ. Right. Yeah, so this is TJ, my co-host. Um, he always has to get some camera time. Yeah. He's pretty, you know, he just, yeah. so competitive. He's like his mom. <laughs> <laughs> so they say our pets are like us, right? They're yeah, he's, little, he's so much, he's so much prettier. But he's about to oh, oh this is when he's going to get the microphone that's the only problem is when he gets into the microphone he loves playing with it so <laughs> so anyway so how um how would you how do you achieve a state of harmony holistically like how would you like and by the way i like what you said about guides because in, versus coaches because i consider myself a guide but you you know you, no one looks up no one googles life life guides in ohio you know like they, they they type life coaches so it's another marketing thing but really i agree that it's more of a guide because the person we're just guiding them everyone has their own connection with source everyone has we're, we're just guiding them to uh discover that reconnect them to something that they are always have had access to but maybe cut themselves off <laughs> Yeah. And I've always, and, and, you know, I see a coach as, as someone that has a, a specific um, thing that they're really good at and that's what they're doing. And, you know, mm-hmm. my goal for the people that I work with is teach them how um, to get in touch with themselves because society and our education have conditioned us in such a way that, you know, we know more about the outside world than we do ourselves and you know that you know you were talking about how do we come into to to harmony yeah um that's that's how 
you know, as self-awareness, acceptance. Going allowing. within instead of constantly seeking, you know, and I'm guilty of that sometimes. I kind of alternate, you know, like between input, input, and like I always like listen to so much, so many podcasts, so many, and just constant input. But I really feel better when I'm quiet and when I go on a walk in nature without my phone, without anything, and just going within, like, that's like, that's when I feel the most connected. But do right. I always do it that way? No. Sometimes I get a little bit of anxiety leaving my house without the the phone, you know? Right. <laughs> like somebody might need me. That's right. an ego, that's an ego trap right there. <laughs> right, right. Well, and you know, having all this outside information is nice. It allows us to conversate. And that's uh, true. And have conversations. Um, so just don't you know, forget that, to do the in, inside work too. Right. And that that's the harmony of it, you know. Okay. Um you know, most coaches would say, you know, what, what, uh, or guides or heal, whatever, you know, um, um, people that are trying to help other people will just, will just say that, Helpers. um, you know, it's about balance. So creating time and space for both, mm. um, is, is important to the routine and that will help create consistency, which, you know, we we're talking about raising frequency today and, and mm -hmm. consistency builds confidence and confidence raises your frequency um, to a degree. And, and then, and then you have a life experience that will humble you um, and that will knock you down. Right. Seemingly a tower moment, whatever. And that is helping us become resilient um, in a way to where we can flow through the experience of life without trying to control it. Right. Like, you know, I think a lot of us, especially like, I want to say in my 20s, at least, I'll just speak for myself, just like letting life throw me up and down and up and down and just reacting and reacting instead of being mindful and responding like, like, like I know to do now. And right. um, gosh, you know, this is such a much easier way. And that's part of why we do what we do is to because we find, wow, this is like, life doesn't have to be so hard. A lot of it, we're creating the difficulty. Right. You know, and I th always say like spirituality is pretty simple. It's our human minds that complicate things. Right. <laughs> it's like pretty simple. But um, speaking of the frequencies, like do our frequencies, would you say that they fluctuate naturally throughout the day or? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, you know, and that's, that's, that's part of the flow, you know, um, and, and being self-aware. Mm -hmm. You know, like for me, uh, if I'm going to do some writing or something creative, I'm better off doing that in the morning than I am in the evening. Because oh, in, uh, in the evening, I'm just like, I'm just like, I just want to relax. I just want to just be, I don't, I, you know, not that I can't write and do work and all that kind of stuff. It's just, um, I found that practice to be helpful for me. They um, say the first two hours are the most productive hours of the day. Like that's when our brains are, that's what they say. I don't know if it's true. <laughs> if it feels true for me, it feels true for me. Like when I first wake up, if I, if I start doing stuff, if I don't take out my phone and start scrolling and it got, well, then, then my first two hours are ruined, but right, right, yeah, right. yeah. It's, it's really, it's really like we kind of set ourselves up for success or not. It's really up to us. Yeah, you know, and I can get stuck in that too, like hanging out, drinking coffee, you know, just, you know, watching nature, you know, I live. Time goes by fast. <laughs> and it's like, I was talking to a friend today and I was like, oh, you know, shit. And she was like, what? What's going on? What? You know, because I said it excited, right? Like I was elevated. And I was like, I got things to do and I've just totally lost track of time. So <laughs> I got to go. I'm sorry. Not to cut you short, but I got to cut you off. I got to get moving, yeah. um, you know, because it is easy to um, find yourself in that heart homeostasis flow, that comfort um, and, 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 and not wanting to leave it. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I think that, you know, behind me, you know, is kind of the yin and yang of the snake yeah. and the snakes are a great, um, you know, in our, in our, in, in the, a lot of indigenous practices and, and, and a lot of, um, things, you know, we use the serpent and the snake as a, um, example of, <coughs> excuse me, you can't grow until you shed your skin. Mm, yeah. You know, you can't, um, so you have to shed what no longer works for you anymore. And that can be, 
habits, that could be relationships, that could be guilty pleasures, that could be whatever it is in, <clears throat> in your life. Mm, forgot water today. Yeah. Oops. I um, so, um, you know, and um, share with you if I could. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> yeah. Take a drink for me and I'll just. Okay. Let's see if it works. Wouldn't that be cool? <laughs> yeah, that would be. <laughs> Wow, that would be that would be a nice technology. Yeah. Te oh, I look, the tickle's gone. Thank you. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, we're, magic we're magical. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, but you know, the beautiful thing is, we all have these capabilities. You know, we're not. No one is is more special than somebody else. You know, um, you know, we're all somebody, and we're all nobody. You know, mm. that would be duality again, you know, and anything one person can do, another person can do with conscious effort. Right. Um, which is a beautiful, a beautiful thing. And as a form, you know, as a, as a former drug addict, as a former, ad, you know, um, a high school dropout, all that kind of stuff. Like I use that in my everyday life. Like I might have made things a little more challenging on myself. <laughs> because I didn't have a degree, I couldn't go get a big job, you know, outside of sales and business. But that was it. I found myself in sales and business and found my um, ability to relate to people um, was in my charisma and, you know, my work ethic and all those things help create that level of success. Right. Um, and um, it's something that I rely on to this point to where I'm like, I can sit in the fire. You know, I can I can outweigh most people because I've been uncomfortable most of my life. So I'm comfortable in the discomfort and the mm -hmm. unknown, um, probably a little bit more than a lot of other people. And one of my challenges, especially dating and, and, and being in relationships, it's like, mm -hmm. oh, you're suffering. That sucks. That's too bad. <laughs> I'm fine. <laughs> you know, like, so are you uh, saying it can come across as maybe like you're not? Uh, sympathetic or to, to, to them because it's so easy for you to like you're used to like discomfort so much that you don't have as, that much empathy for others no I empathize with them but I under also under uh, I understand that the only reason that they're suffering and and, and stressing um, is is because they're trying to achieve through doing rather than being mm -hmm. authentic and they're chasing something Right. They're they're chasing a status. They're chasing um, a destination, a, a promotion, a label, a, a, a certain income, a certain lifestyle, those types of things. And I'm I, I'm I've done that too, so I understand that. Like the hustle uh, mentality. I used to be in the hustle mentality, and now like there's a great meme that goes around, and I, I every time I see it, I repost it. But it's like it says hustle. And it's X'd out and underneath that it says align. Right. And it's 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 more about getting into alignment. Because when you're in alignment, you don't have to chase. The things right. that, that you want are like talking about frequency. They're attracted to you without you having to put a lot of effort. Well, and that's what we were talking about with the law of attraction and time and space move through us, right? Mm -hmm. So when we align ourselves um, to what we want, um, we develop the skill sets, the connections, the, you know, there is a doing part. It's, you know, I remember when I first started this path and I listened to a, 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 a Wayne Dyer uh, meditation. He's like, you can win the lottery sitting on the couch. And I was like, no, you can't. You have to go buy a lottery ticket. Yeah, that's, a, that's <laughs> one of those big misconceptions. I love Wayne Dyer. I'm surprised he said that, but because yeah, yeah. like there's no law of attraction without taking action. And, right. and I think a lot of people um, miss that step. Like, like right. it's, it's, it's like, like, like I always bring up my deck of cards that I created, which, mm -hmm. you know, you have a deck of my cards. Like mm -hmm. I didn't, I, I had the idea. It was mm -hmm. an inspired idea and downloaded to me. And I knew I needed to take action. And I knew immediately because when, when there's an idea out there, it's going into the ethers, right? I'm not the only one receiving it. So right. it's like, who's going to act on it first? And I think we all have had that experience where we don't act on it. And then there it is. Like, that was my idea. Mm, yeah. It wasn't that, only yours and you didn't act that, on it. And now it's theirs. <laughs> that was consciousness idea. And you got it just like the other people did. Yep. Um, yep. I, I literally just had an experience of that the other day. Um, I've been saying for years, I don't understand uh, with the water, the water uh, shortage, especially mm -hmm. in like 
Africa and places like that, how we couldn't create a device kind of like an air conditioner that sucks the hot air in, condenses it, and then use the water that comes out as drinking water. Mm -hmm. um, and literally now on my Facebook for like a week now, there's a device that does that and it takes it through reverse That's osmosis so and you know, weird. All, all the things. And that sounds uh, like it'd be difficult to patent and, and, and come up with though. So let, yeah, them, I'm not yeah, let them do it. <laughs> so, so yeah, my, my drawings and my idea, you know, I'd have to have, have sat down with somebody way smarter than me in, in that area yeah. um, and developed it. But uh, yeah, even a friend pointed it out to me. They're like, you said that years ago, that would be a good idea. And I was like, you know, it wasn't for me, you know, I just captured it and, you know, thought it was cool. You know? Right. It was in your, it was in the unified field. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Very, very, very cool. Um, so, so, um, Oh, go ahead. Sorry. No, no. I was just going to ask, um, how do you, how do you create and maintain conscious relationships with yourself and also others? So that's always the dance, right? Because again, if we're looking at frequency, and as we said before, we're always fluctuating back and forth. So being conscious is just being aware. Mm. So if you're aware, you're aware of you're tired. Like I'm tired right now. Like I'm, I could be snappy. I could be cranky. I don't, maybe I don't want to do something where you're, you're, co-part your partner or whatever beloved however you want a friend whatever um they're in a different place and they want to go do stuff <laughs> um it's just the conversation then you know and it's finding that that acceptance that it's okay not to be in the same space at the same time mm-hmm mm -hmm. Like with a conscious relationship, I, I work with, you know, I do a lot of stuff in my personal coaching with, you know, addiction recovery also, but also like I learned quickly that it seems to me at the root of almost everyone's issues is some type of addiction. You know, it's so weird. Like everything's the, the, the root cause is some sort of addiction and it might be addiction to negative thinking and it might be addiction to just like ruminating on thoughts which causes like OCD and anxiety and you know, things like that. Like that's a, that's a huge one. So many people are overthinkers and create their own suffering, you know, and even when they become aware sometimes it's like such a habit, such an addiction. And you know, they, you get addicted to even that drama, you drama is addictive and like mm -hmm. toxic relationships can be addictive because of that reason, because of the, the chemicals in your brain. And then you get into a normal relationship, a conscious relationship. And sometimes people feel like, especially the first one after a toxic one, you could find it a little boring because you're like, you're, you're like not used to a healthy relationships and the roller coaster ride. And then your brain's like, this even keel that you're not used to when you feel like something's wrong, like right. they're not getting jealous and not getting triggered and they're not getting upset with me. And, and, and it feels like they don't care, you know, that's right. before, you know, any better, you know, that happened to me anyway. And a lot of other people I know, but yeah. I think like when in a conscious relationship, both people have to be of course capable, but also willing to, you know, have this healthy communication and hold space for each other. And, and then when we ask somebody, when we communicate and we, we ask their opinion or we tell them what we need, we, we can't punish them for their responses. Cause what we're doing is we're training them to never be honest with us again. You right. know, like, <laughs> like we have to, that's, that's, that's part of being a conscious relationship. You know, be careful what you ask. Cause you know, you're going to, if you want someone to be honest with you, you cannot punish them. Let right. them be honest and, or don't ask if you really don't think you can handle it if you're too sensitive at that time. And hopefully you get to a point where you guys have enough trust and, you know, unconditional love to where these little things aren't, you know, so inflammatory to your relationship. Right. Well, and even, you know, in my previous relationship, I saw, um, and even in my own self, moving from the city into the country, mm -hmm. um, what a dramatic shift you know, um, and, and your, how you operate, you mm -hmm. know, like when you're in the city, you're out doing things all the time, you're going out to eat, you're doing, 
you know, when you're when you're removed from all that, it's 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 pretty basic and pretty simple. Um, you know, you don't you don't do a lot of that. It doesn't. There's no know, distractions. No, and so you have to like you have to be able to sit in silence. You know, yeah. and I think that's the important part. I mean, for for anything in conscious relationships, it's it's about awareness. And then, you know, doing your best to communicate that. Um, With a good delivery. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, and, and for me, I found, you know, in my previous relationship, I would sometimes get triggered because she was sharing things that were bothering her, which mm -hmm. I could hold space for. Mm -hmm. But But it felt like I was being attacked because mm -hmm. it wasn't like, you know, I'm feeling this way when this happens. You know, it was when you, you know, when you do this, I feel yeah. this way. And I'm like, well, sorry, you know, <laughs> but I'm not in control of your emotions. Yeah. And, um, you know, and, um, and and thank you for letting me know uh, how, you know, tickling you makes you feel triggered or makes you feel anxious or, you know, any of those things. Um, a and, lot, and so a lot I, of people hate tickles. <laughs> that's yeah, a, that's a common one. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, and you know, there's a childlike enthusiasm in me sometimes. And so I like to do childlike things, you know, like pinch my lover's butt or, you know, give him a little rib jab is, you know, just little, little things that, you know, I don't mean anything by it. Um, it's just trying to be playful. Mm -hmm. And, um, when that wasn't reciprocated in the way that I was intending it to be, well, then I, I can modify that behavior. Um, so I'm not doing that and causing it, you know, but, you know, when we're not able to talk about the behaviors or what's going on that helps cause these things to come up, um, it can be challenging to stay in conscious awareness. Yeah. And, 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 and you know, uh, again, it's, it's way easier to create a story of certainty in your head of where it's going or how it is or whatever, mm -hmm. than it is to be in the uncertainty and say, okay, well, this is how it's showing up right now. We'll just give it some space and we'll give it some time and we'll let it, you know, naturally unfold and mature um, through the process of everyday life. Like, you know, everybody's in a hurry to get somewhere. I don't know where that, that, that destination is. Um, you know, I've chased my own destinations and I found that um, when I got there, I usually found out that I had to do something next. Yeah. So, you know, now I'm learning it's it's just the journey. It's the, the walk uh, rather than, you know, getting to a certain status or a certain place or a certain, you know, oh, once I'm financially independent, well, you know, now, now, now I've got a new goal of what, what a new, you've set the bar higher. Now you got a whole 10 minutes of peace and happiness. And then it's the next goal. Now we got to, now right. we got to hit the next. And I, I feel like that's okay. Um, to always, I mean, we, we're always supposed to be evolving and growing, but like you said, it's the journey, be happy along the way. And that's actually the way we reach our goals. You know, is that alignment is when we're already happy it, on the way to our goals, on the way to the next big thing, um, instead of waiting to be happy, that's actual insanity. When we really think about it, like it, it could be a goal, like a weight loss goal. Well, I'll right. be happy when I lose 20 pounds and I'm not going to be happy before then. Like be happy on your way and, and, and appreciate all the little stepping stones <laughs> that it right. took. Allow right. stepping stones. That's what Bashar says. Allow right. stepping stones. I love that. Yeah, I mean, you can only take one step at a time. Mm -hmm. um, and so, you know, knowing where you want to go is important, but it is the process of getting there um, that is actually the process. Right. <laughs> um, you know, and there's a lot of ways to become financially independent. Um, and a lot of times people think it's just having so much money you can't spend it all. Well, you know, you can look at the people that have won millions almost billions of dollars in the lottery and a few years later all that money's gone why mm -hmm. they didn't have discipline to to maintain that level of financial frequency so then it, they got it and it was like 
oh, I've always wanted this. I'm going to go here and do this. And I'm going to give, you know, all this stuff. And then, you know, a few years later, it's it's gone, um, you know, and, and it's easy to do. Abraham uh, Hicks say that, um, you just reminded me of this. They, they say that if you have, like, if everybody was given the exact same amount of money mm -hmm. within not, not a very long time, the same people who were wealthy will be become wealthy again. And the same people who didn't have the money will, because it's all about frequency. It's all mm -hmm. about that vibrational energy. You know, and, and, and one of the things, um, you know, how do you, ra you know, uh, raise your frequency of, of self-love? It comes through discipline. It comes through frequency. It's about letting the things the what we, what I would think of as a distraction Mm -hmm. which is a short-term goal, short-term pleasure for a longer time, mm -hmm. um, you know, and, and not getting so sidetracked, you know, um, you know, like I want to lose 20, I don't want to lose 20 pounds. I, I can't. No, it. don't lose 20 pounds. You wouldn't, um, that wouldn't look, gain weight again. You wouldn't look good. <laughs> but, <laughs> You'd be a no, stick figure. I, I was, I was there just a few months ago, you know, so I, I, I know what it looks like. Um, what? Yeah. So I can't imagine. You know, my previous relationship, I lost yeah, a couple pounds. months ago. and then, and then, you know, through the heartbreak and, and that process, you know, I got down to like a hundred pounds. Um, so it's what I weigh, we were the same. We could have, yeah. Yeah. That's we, could have, we, we, we could have dressed up as each other. That would have been yeah. Fun. But you're taller. So that's even skinnier. Yeah. <laughs> I'm short. I'm only five foot tall. So a hundred pounds yeah. for me is kind of, it's, I'm not yeah. saying it's, you know, everybody who's five foot should be a hundred pounds, but I'm saying it's, it's not like extreme. Sure. Sure. And I'm only five, three. So, I mean, I don't okay. have a lot of height on you. So, um, <laughs> <laughs> but still, I know a hundred pounds is underweight for a five foot three dude. Yeah. 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 You got the muscles, you got extra muscles. Yeah. So it wasn't healthy and it wasn't something that I was trying to maintain. It's just, just what happened. <laughs> yeah. Um, and you know, um, I really allowed myself uh, to, to be in it this time, um, you know, in my previous tower moments where I got my redirections um, in, in whatever area of the life that it happened, I was so quick to want to respond and move through it as fast as I could. You mm -hmm. know, I'd meditate for four hours a day. I would do breath work like a maniac. I'd go to the gym. I would so uh, strict on my diet and, you know, all those various different things um, that I didn't know grace. And I didn't. It sounds like that was like passion. you were, it was like um, that type of hardcore is, is like, you're trying to control. Well, I couldn't control that, but I can control these things. Right. So we're going to do that. Right. I'm going to feel better because I've got this stuff under control, but I can't right. control this relationship shit. Right. I can't control anything other than me. So I'm just going to focus on what on I me, can yeah. control. And, uh, but I do agree though, when you have, like what you said earlier is so true that self-discipline is a high form of self-love because when we do have a goal that we know, like, like we, we know that the only reason anybody wants anything is they feel they're going to, they're going to feel better when they have it, once they get mm -hmm. it, once they hit that goal. So when you are able to give yourself the gift of self-discipline and actually, you know, maintaining and, and the attitude and the things that you need to do to reach your goal, setting yourself up for success, then that's self-love right there. And, and I think self-care is, is probably something that a lot of, uh, I'm not saying men don't, but a lot of women almost feel guilty, like, you know, guilty about taking care of themselves. Like I got to take care of everybody else. But really when we take care of ourselves first, we're in a better position to take care of our family or, or, or and friends. Yeah. And I would say men have a hard time with that as well. Um, you, you, oh yeah. I mean, you don't see us going to get the workaholics. Yeah yeah, yeah. 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 We're not going for spa days, you know, very, you know, um, you I feel know, like you guys are better at relaxing than we are, but yeah. Um, um, maybe I don't and know. falling asleep. Well, yeah, because you know, I'm so we're envious of that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I was always asked, How do you sleep so well? I'm like, I'm at peace, you know, like I'm okay. Um, I've got this wild energy, like I try to, it takes me an hour to fall asleep, you know, but right. I gotta quit saying it takes me an hour to fall asleep because that's probably why it takes me an hour to fall asleep, right? Yeah, your identity. Um, and I would, I would challenge the fact that what I did 
in, in this process wasn't discipline because I had to be very disciplined at not shoving the emotions, the thoughts, the, mm. the things that I didn't want to deal with the, you know, the crying, the, you know, all the things like it took a lot of discipline to stay open, to allow that to happen through me and allow my, my soul, my spirit, whatever you want to say to help cleanse my egoic conditioning, my nervous system and let everything go like to just nap, you know, like, and, and be lazy and, 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 you know, knowing that I had put in place the things that I had to put in place so I could take care of what I had to take care of, mm -hmm. um, as far as, you know, making enough money to, you know, pay my bills and, you know, do those types of things. Um, but even if that got into a situation to where I was homeless, um, you know, I, I would have probably been okay. Um, yeah. you know, and, and, um, you know, I've met some really sweet and, and amazing, uh, people that, um, used to live on the streets, you know, and, um, the, you know, one of them I was talking to a few weeks ago and he was like, it's funny, you know, I would, I would go on a bender, a drug addiction bender, and I would spend all my money and then I wouldn't have money for rent. So I'd end up on the streets. Mm -hmm. And he's like, now, like, I'm clean, I'm sober, everything's going good. And, and my goal is to get back on the streets. <laughs> <laughs> Explain that. I don't get it. So, it, it, it like not having the, the, to worry about anything other than oh. just taking care of yourself. Like, you know, his goal is to have, you know, to live on out in nature and 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 be able to live off the land and not sense. have to do the hustle bustle thing and have to, you know, work a job like, that he doesn't like and yeah. you know, those things. Yeah, so, I know. Yeah. We're, we're like programmed to think that the American dream is like, you know, the corporate world or cubicle world. And it's like that really that's a dream, like, you know, becoming self-employed and doing the job that I love is the dream. Right. Yeah, you know, and, right. and it's like, man, it's, it's, it's so fantastic. And I'm glad that I was in corporate as long as I was. So I, so, so I so much more appreciate this mm -hmm. life, you know, right. this life and then helping others. It's like so, so rewarding. Right. You know, um, right. it's, it's, I, and I'm glad, like, you're glad that we went through, like you said earlier, we went through all of this stuff dark night of the soul, all of the addiction stuff. We both had addiction problems, mm -hmm. traumas, you know, throughout our life, but we didn't get, well, we did get stuck for a while. I got stuck for a while. Oh yeah. And, <laughs> but we got out of it. <laughs> I, you know, and I might get stuck again. You know, I still have ruminating thoughts of things and I'm just like, yeah. oh, wait, when, is, when are these going to go away? Like, oh, I had a dream a couple nights ago that I got hammered, like drinking red wine. Red wine was my like vice. Right. And I was sneaking in my dream. It was so vivid. And I woke up so thankful, like that it was just a dream. But, yeah. <laughs> I, and the weirdest part is I felt drunk in my dream. Do you know mm -hmm. what I mean? And it was mm -hmm. just like so real. And I and, and I was definitely like hiding it from people, sneaking it. And it was like people that I know. And I'm just like, it was the most awful, realistic dream that I, and I was just, thank God I woke up. Right. And it wasn't yeah. true. Yeah. You know, I, after my relationship betrayal, that, that was, I would wake up angry and I'm like, oh, what? And then I would recall my dreams and I'm like, oh man, like when are the, when, when are we going to quit visiting each other in our dreams? Like, yeah. <laughs> I mean, and I was talking to a friend today and I was like, you know, I can still feel the magnetic pull, you know, like I can still feel the emotion of it. I can still. You said uh, that last interview and I was surprised um, then. And now here. We, yeah. It, yeah. It's still there and still well, having a spiritual bond. Dreams. Right. Yeah. And still having consistent dreams. So, um, and, and, uh, you know, I mean, according to, you know, someone who made this up, you know, there's like an unfinished soul contract, twin flame, whatever. Um, and, and that's, that's part of that experience. And it's just like, oh man, okay, it is what it is. And, you know, I have to make room for it. And then I have to allow, um, um, it not to, to, to stop me or change who I, who I am. Mm -hmm. or um allow people into my life you know i mean it's amazing how many um beautiful caring 
um, considerate people or, you know, I'm surrounded by um, and you and, and as, as well as that, including in that. And, uh, and so, I, you know, I had to look at that, the bigger picture. You know, it's not what I lost, but what I gained. And what I gained was an awareness that, um, you know, you can't, you can make all the right plans, do all the right things. Um, and if, if, if it's not a vibrational match, then it's, it's not gonna, it's not gonna work out, um, in, in the, uh, in the time frame. Don't know what the future holds. Don't know, you know, like, you know, there's been a lot of channelers and there's been a lot of psychics tell me a lot of things and I'm like, okay, we'll see. Well, and also like, do you think, um, and I've heard channelers say things like this and just in general with people that that person, oh, for instance, let's bring up my, my ex-husband. So, mm -hmm. you know, and that's all completely healed. This was a long time ago. Like, I mean, 2006, right? We're 2024 now. Um, but I mean, I wasn't like completely healed, right? Right. That was the, the year I left. But anyway, bottom line is a, a lot of stuff. Like I call him my master teacher and that what, what some of these people say who are able to see into the spiritual realms is that, you know, we picked each other, like, like we had a contract, a soul contract where he was supposed to be a certain way to teach me certain things. And he was literally like, it was a gift for me. He was doing his job by being difficult or controlling or manipulating like all of the things because it created a, a fiercely independent woman, you know, who like got shit done, you know, like I wasn't a complacent, you know, I could have, I guess I could have chosen to be um, complacent and just, you know, smile and nod and be a, a one of, you know, a wife that just goes along with whatever her husband wants. But that's, that's, that, I don't think that's in my blueprint. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, like what I'm saying is something that we could see as somebody being, you know, um, really mean to us or we feel like you know i'm not saying nobody gets victimized but maybe we chose that you know before we came in as part of our blueprint maybe we chose hey you know he could be like you know my soulmate uh, you know like we could be amazing on the other side where we just made an agreement hey will you do this to me so that i can learn this and he right. was like god i really don't want to lower my vibration like that in this incarnation but sure i'll do it for right. you out of love Right. You know, like we don't know, like that. Well, it, that is hey. unconditional love, right? Like, yeah, there is a such thing as tough love, you know. And and I like this story of the spiritual thing because mm -hmm. you know, um, you know, I used to joke like, well, why did I choose my parents? You know, like, but you know, um, and, and all the different things. But you know, um, it, it it is really amazing when you follow this, um, through, you know, um. You know, because I would I would say, you know, I definitely had childhood, you know, abuse and and and, and trauma and, mm -hmm. you know, all, all those various th things, which is like a huge trigger of addiction. Right. And me and my dad, you know, um, could just would battle back and forth. Mm. You know, it was two intellectuals trying to, you know, Greco wrestle each other's minds, you know, mm -hmm. and who can, you know, and then we would realize like we you know, once we got real emotional and, and got angry later on, we would come back and be like, oh, um, you were really saying the same thing I was saying just in a different way. Sorry about that. You know, um, but, you know, you know, having having that said, like um, it's been it's been it's been a challenging relationship. And I can tell you just last week and, and this is a label that I overheard him say. And, um, I was, I was with a client, we were doing ceremony mm -hmm. and, um, he was processing his emotion. The, the client was processing his emotions. He was, he was releasing, he was crying and he, had, he couldn't do that in front of me. Like if I would come into the room, he would stop and mm -hmm. I'm like, okay, I'm going to give you space so you can feel the feels and, and do your thing. I'm going to take a step outside. Um, just so you're aware. And if you need anything, just just yell and I'll, I'll come. And, um, and so I, I went outside and my dad and, uh, one of his friends were at, at the, at the pole barn. Um, and, um, his friend was asking what I did. 
And my dad literally said, you know, and it just warmed my heart because it was acknowledgement. He was like, my son's a shaman. Nice. Um, okay. I thought it was going the other direction. Okay, good. Yeah. Good. Like he's like, my son's a shaman and he trained, he's trained with uh, shamans from all over the world. And it's, it makes me kind of nervous having these people come here um, because we, we live on a 20 acre property. There's two homes. And so he can see what I do and he's observing, mm -hmm. you know, and, and paying attention. And he said, it makes me nervous because they come in here and they're like a nervous wreck. You know, you can tell that they're just, they're having all these challenges and, you know, whatever. He said, but it's amazing. They leave and it's like a completely different person. Mm -hmm. um, he's like, they're smiling. They're all at peace. They're, you know, giving him hugs and thanking him. Like, he's like, I don't know what he does or how he does it, but I see the effect that it has. Yeah. And, you know, any kid I would I would challenge to hear that from a parent, especially when you've heard your whole life, like you're not nothing, you know, you'll never be anything. You'll never you know, you're lazy, you're this, you're that, whatever, whatever the projections were um, and actually hear those words of acknowledgement. Um, I mean, like like that, I was like. Wow. It's almost like a spontaneous healing in that moment. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and it was immediate. Right. And then the next day or so I went out there to thank them, you know, because it was, it was like one of those things that just hit me at a heart level. And I was like, wow, he finally, he finally sees like, not that I've been, you know, I mean, when I first moved back here, he was like, you're not going to change me. You're not going to do this. You're not going to heal from here. You're not going to. And I just was like, okay, <laughs> you know, like, I'm not going to put resistance up, but okay. You know, like, we'll see, we'll see what happens, you know, and a year later, here we are. Um, but, um, um, you know, um, you know, and I was thanking him for, you know, all of his support and, and the, the tough love and the unconditional love and, you know, showing up when he didn't want to, you know, but, and working the job that he didn't want to, to make sure, you know, we had food and, you know, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And, you know, like, so I was pouring my heart out being really, you know, expressive. And immediately he's like, well, I could do better. And I was like, yeah, you're right. And that was the part that I've always got stuck on. Yeah. So he said he could do better than you. Is that what he meant? He could have done better at being supportive and encouraging oh, and all the things beautiful. I was Okay. All the things I was thanking him for, he he didn't know how to take the compliment because I was actually acknowledging, yeah. you know, like what he gave. Got it. Versus like being, you know, a few years ago when I first had my awakening and was talking about the abuse and, you know, how I experienced life and all that stuff. I mean, we got into a a, a huge fight one night and, and it was over a a legal battle that I thought I did really well on. And he didn't like the way that it went because he mm -hmm. thought, you know, I should have fought harder. And I was like, mm -hmm. I just wanted, I just, it wasn't worth fighting for at the end of the You day. want to put your energy into it. I've been there. Right. Like yeah. why, why continue to fight this, this legal battle that if I win, I'm, I'm stuck in a neighborhood in this house that needs a lot of work that I've been robbed multiple times, blah, 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 mm -hmm. blah, blah. Like I want it out this was my opportunity out. So I took it, you know, and I was stoked, mm -hmm. but he didn't because he was like, you know, that's money, you know, that's possession. That's, uh, you know, why would you ever do that? Um, and, and, you know, in a, in a bit of rage, um, and anger, I, I, I told him I hated him mm. and, you know, like I wish he was never my dad and, you know, all these really harsh, um, truths, which in the moment, I, I meant that's why well, you probably it. needed to. Yeah. You, you had to go through that phase to get to the next fast forward when you're given him positive reinforcement. And then, right. yeah, he blew his mind so much. He didn't even know how to respond. Right. <laughs> like what was happening? I can do better. Right. Right. Yeah, I see how that went now. So yeah. how would you, I know we're almost out of time, but how would you, um, Let's say, so I'm going to have all of Chris, Chris's information on how to reach him and how, like, if, if you're in, you're in Northern Kentucky, correct? Yeah. Yeah. Just uh, south of Cincinnati. South of Cincinnati. Mm -hmm. Um, so 
would if someone wanted to hire you do they come to you do you do things over zoom or how does that work how, do, how does that work so i work um i mean it of course depends on what they're looking to have done mm -hmm. um or you know what they're wanting to do um some things we have to do in personal but uh in person but there is a lot of options um to do things virtually Remotely, yeah um virtually. And, and you know um you know, a lot of times, even the, the energy healing, virtual energy healing, we're not on Zoom or, you know, anything like that. Um, we just schedule a time and, you know, you get comfortable in your place, you know, mm -hmm. where you're not being disturbed. And, you know, I do my work from here. Um, and um, so that's how that works. And, um, and, and how I have been able to work with clients. So. Nice, nice. Mm -hmm. So and then, but if they're in like this, Cincinnati tri-state area they could come see you in person technically right oh absolutely absolutely and if there's certain I mean there's certain ceremonies and stuff we have to be together so you know I mean I have people travel all over the country to come um do work together so oh, um I mean nice. we're, we're bringing international people in next month so I'm oh really nice excited. congratulations um, so, I know I love that I have international clients I'm like I'm an international life coach you know <laughs> <laughs> as long as I speak English they can live anywhere you know Right, right, until right. I learn a new language, which I should probably do. Well, so, you know, I found sometimes not knowing the language. I mean, I've trained, like I said, with shamans that don't speak hardly any English and um, or none. And we get along just fine. My job uh, would be difficult to do without. Yeah, <laughs> they're, they're going to have to understand me and vice versa. That would. Yeah, that, that's me. Yeah. So um, what would be your. Um, biggest suggestion since this is called like how to raise people's frequencies and i know we've touched on it already but like since we fluctuate all the time let's say somebody's in a typical day and they they something happens they got triggered which you guys triggers is just an indicator it's it's not bad don't beat yourself up don't be mad like we all get triggered still as an indicator of okay i might need to work a little bit harder in this area all you do is catch yourself allow the feelings you know mm -hmm. Don't judge yourself and just witness them and, and you're, it's going to get better and better with pra practice and repetition, practice right. and repetition. So let's say that happens. So to somebody, something happens in their day, maybe they hate their boss and, you know, and then their boss comes in and takes a shit on them or whatever. I, I mean, mm -hmm. not literally. So then what do, <laughs> I don't know why that came out, but that's what, hap that's what happened. Some so people pay for that. I don't say. So oh, I no, I was hoping you were going to go there, but there you did. <laughs> <laughs> there you did it. So, so the boss says something that is triggering and then how does somebody like, how would you recommend now they're vibrating at a low frequency because they're in that anger and, and what we, oh, let's, let's say this. Cause a lot of people are like, well, there's no higher and lower. This isn't a judgment. This is a frequency meaning vibrate faster at, at certain, um, vibrational frequencies of love and joy and happiness or vibrate slower. It's mechanical. Okay. It's not a judgment. And, and I just think that we all know in this 3d physical reality, it feels better when we're vibrating at the, at the levels of happiness and joy. So this is what most of us choose to do. Some people do choose actually the, to vibrate lower in those frequencies and they're very content doing so. They, some people enjoy being depressed and angry. Like that's is an excuse for them. I know people I'm like this. The, the the greatest addiction is our comfort zone yeah because we want to know our we want to know that we're safe and we're secure yeah. it's like a false reality it's like an electric fence for our dogs and being pets. stagnant's bad for me like when i get stagnant you know when that you know boredom's not the best frequency because we're out of creative mode and we're creators right, right. you know so what would you suggest when someone does dip in their frequency during the day because i mean i think there's a like when we can downward spiral very quickly and easily if we let it, we let our thoughts go down that direction. Um, you know, I, I do believe we can create depression. You know, I've seen, but people don't want to say that they want to blame everything else. But I, I, I've seen people, including myself, get out of depression and create depression. Right. <laughs> We got to take accountability. The, the, the anxiety helps us get out of depression, but then it, it puts us back into it eventually. Yeah. Um, 
Yeah, we create our own anxiety as well. But, you know, just being mindful of our thoughts and our responses, like we'll say, you know, and there's other things. There's our environmental factors for sure. Like our, what food are you eating? Are you exercising? Are you getting any sunshine? You know, these are all going to raise your frequency, guys. What, but I'm going to let Chris give the rest. What do you listen to? You know, what do you read? What kind of television do you watch? You know, all that stuff affects our frequency. Right. Because our consciousness is always going. Um, and so, you know, it, it doesn't really be, it's not able to discern what's uh, real and what's not, mm -hmm. you know, so if what are you giving your attention to when you give your attention to something like the news, like you just mentioned, right. and it's all, it is designed to put you in fear because fear sells then then guess what, you know, you're, you're disempowered yourself. And now that right. fear has power over you and you voluntarily are turning that shit on. Right. Well, without hope, you're easily to be manipulated. 100%. So, you know, the, the whole the whole concept of trying to create uh, a mentality that there's somebody out there, some savior that's going to save you isn't going to happen. What do you say uh, to the people who would say, well, I have to watch the news. Was Otherwise, I'm just burying my head in the sand. Well, you know, it's it's because I go back and forth about this as well. Like my dad just actually said something. Well, they got it right because it started raining and they predicted that it was going to rain. You know. Oh, yeah, they're right. And, it's and a 50-50 like, chance. I was like, well, you know better than I because I'm the type of person that's like, oh, it's raining. Um, it's not raining. You know, like I don't know. That's don't how know. you know. Yeah. I, yeah. You know, I don't. You know, sometimes I look at the, you know, the the forecast if like a big ceremony is coming up or something like that so we can be prepared for. Yeah. You know, yeah. That makes sense. Like that. But. Um, you know, for the most of us, it's not going to change our life one bit. What the puppets do on television, what the puppets do in, in, in the, the government and all that kind of stuff. The reason they're letting us know is because it's already happened and there's nothing that we can do about it. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, what we can do about it is, 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 is in the here and now. Um, you know, creating our own communities, building relationships, building rapport, you know, creating foundations, charities, whatever. Um, to and I think keeping our own vibrations as high as possible. So we are in a state where we can help others when it comes down to it. Right. Because right. if we're crumbling, if we need help, how are we going to help other people? <laughs> right. Right. You know, I, I shared a post today with Richard Bran Branson was talking about, you know, being happy. And how important that was uh, to the success of all the things that he's ever done. And he's like, I've been heartbroken and all those kind of things. But, um, you know, happiness is a choice and it's a practice. Mm -hmm. um, and you can you still know. have happiness. And I've done this while bad things are going on in your life. You could still have a stream of happiness running through that. You can. Absolutely. You can. Absolutely. And, and some simple things is, you know, put on some music if you can, some happy music. Um, get up and move. Movement's a good way to do that. Um, somatic. Yeah, doing Playing. somatic work, you know, doing some breath work. Put, putting my hand on my chest and, and, and feeling my heartbeat, that helps me ground. So even if somebody's barking at me, um, you know, trying to get me to, you know, bow down or fear or whatever, you know, being grounded in yourself and being aware of... Um, what you can and can't control, you know, if somebody can't like, control the uncontrollables. Anytime you guys catch yourself uh, having anxiety about something you can't control, just realize you're creating suffering unnecessarily. Right. Because you can't um, control it anyway. And no amount of worrying will prepare you for the inevitable. Like we're, this is 3d time space reality. We're going to have an, people die, pets die or family members. Like things are going to happen and no amount of worrying about it will prevent that. In fact, I believe that worrying is negative prayer. And if any, if anything, you're going to attract it more if you worry about it. Like, also, you're ruining your present moment. You're now. Now is all we have. So right. if you're living in the future or the past, you're missing out. Right. Uh, your power, and, the power of now. Right. And so it's, it's sometimes we have to create that space because of what's going on or, or mm -hmm. whatever. Um, but, you know. I think it what was a Gandalf in Lord of the Rings, this too shall pass. 
um, you know, uh, or you shall not pass. Um, like, you know, it's putting up that defense in that moment and saying, I'm not going to allow your energy to penetrate mine. Right. Right. I'm not going to let your shit attitude or your shit day or your shit action. Like it's not, I'm not going to allow it to affect me. Um, you know, and that's, a, that, that's a practice too. You know, you right. can we say, can't give our power to other people in that way. You know, as soon as we give our power, you know, like let somebody uh, either, oh, they made me happy or they made me sad. You know, that's right. giving your power away. We got, we control our own happiness and our own sadness too. <laughs> right. Don't give it right. away to somebody because they're going to abuse it. <laughs> right. And, you know, Every I time. think that's, that's what goes on to the whole, you know, the, the victim of uh, victor mentality and the competition and, you know, who's stronger than who and, you know, all that kind of stuff. Like none of that matters at the end of the day. Uh, in a conscious and, relationship, it should be your, your, a friend, not, not, it shouldn't feel like you're in a competition. And if you, if you're in a relationship that feels like a competition and you're not being uplifted by your partner, it's, it's not a, it's not a great relationship. You need to have some healthy communication and t change things around or find somebody who is going to be an uplifter to you and support you. It's, it's supposed to feel like a friend. It's not supposed to feel like, you know, a lot of people think that's normal, Chris a lot of people think that's normal. Yeah. And I understand it's come through conditioning. I mean, but it's about mm -hmm. collaboration. You know, it's what are we doing this for? Why are we doing this? Where are we going? You know, and those are questions mm -hmm. that can continuously be asked, you know, um, to help ground us and root us in our own version of the truth of why we're, we're partnering together, why we're walking together, why we're doing business together, whatever it is, why we're friends, mm -hmm. you know, um, you know, I have, I have friends that, you know, I've had for, for many years and we don't walk the same path, you know, and you know, that they always, you know, well, you know, you're, you're different. No, I'm still human. I just walk a different way than you do. Mm hmm. You know, I've I've chose to make some different shifts and, um, you know, I, and and that doesn't make me better or worse than you. It just makes, you know, I and it's we can still relate. You call me for advice like there's still there's still value in our friendship. Right. And a different perspective is good to get. Right. For all of us. Right. And and so, you know. Um, but it's not somebody that I'm going to be able to have uh, a long term successful uh, relationship with. You know, it's I, I use this, you know, this example all the time. If somebody is afraid of nature, you know, you take an inner city person just because they haven't experienced nature. And you put them out in nature. Most of the time, they're going to have a really hard time. Yeah, because it's the unknown for them. Yeah. So those are the type of those are people unless they want to overcome that fear. You don't want to invite to go camping or canoeing with you because <laughs> the whole time you're just going to be trying to de-escalate them. Sue right? them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Right. That's so true. Yeah. And it, it's not a judgment. I mean, it's a discernment. So I guess it's a form of judgment if you want. But. Um, I call it, I call those observations. Like we have to be able to observe things, you know, it, it, and I think the difference between observing and judging is what are your feelings behind it? When you say it, are your feelings judgmental or is it just simply a, a merely an observation? Right. Yeah. I could also say that, see that like judgment is putting somebody in a box uh, that they can either can't get out of um, mm -hmm. because we put them there. So then we have to take them out. Mm -hmm. um, so, oh, you're always this way. Mm -hmm. Am I, you know, am mm -hmm. I always this way? Um, and, you know, those types of things. So, I mean, it, it again, communication is, is a great tool, but our language, I mean, if we were, we were born in Japan, um, we would speak a different language. Now, the interesting thing about, uh, 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 language and the frequency of language, according to Dr. Emoto, who studied the ice crystals and, and water for those who aren't aware. Um, he said the most, the, usually the words that created the most beautiful ice crystals 
um, and water was love and gratitude. Mm -hmm. He said, and together, not separate, together. Love and gratitude. Love and gratitude. The interesting thing is, is if you take the equivalent to the English words love and gratitude and the Japanese version, and I, I, I don't recall the word, um, but the, the words that uh, equate to the same thing in their dialect, it creates the same uh, crystal effect in the water. Because it's energy, not the language. Mm -hmm. Right. It's not the conditional label. Mm -hmm. It's the vibration of, of how we've, of the words. And that's why I always like, you know, since I'm a law of attraction coach too, and I, I when I tell people about, you know, the, like, I don't discourage positive affirmations, but I encourage, like, just saying something doesn't do much. It's the feeling behind it. That's where the energy, you know, the universe goes by vibration and vibration comes from emotions and f feelings more than what you say. It's got to match that, that, you know, like we all know about the, well, um, we don't all know, but you know about heart and mind coherence, having that match and, you know, having that elevated emotion as Joe Dispenza would call it, uh, along with the, the positive affirmation, you know, you, you, until you finally get it. Cause like you said earlier about our, our unconscious, our unconscious mind does not know the difference between reality and imagination. And that's why when people get really bad anxiety and their bodies, like they get, they can make themselves like, I used to break out in hives as a kid. Cause I'm like really professional at, at causing problems in my body with my thoughts, like immediate. So, um, but that makes me guess what, then I can do the opposite. If I can make myself have negative things, I can also make myself have positive things. Our minds are very powerful. Our emotions are even more powerful. So right. if, if, if we can, if we can just do that, um, we can change our lives just with, by getting, you know, I had, I don't remember what my point was, but yeah, <laughs> but that elevated emotion along with the positive statement because, oh yeah, the subconscious mind doesn't know. So we can just make ourselves really sick. That's what I was going to say. Right. Immediately sick with our thoughts because our minds and our body are connected. They just are. So you've right. got, you've got, you've got to get them in alignment and then you're going to see your reality change once you can get the mind heart coherence and it takes practice and it takes repetition because we didn't get this way overnight with the negative thinking being brainwashed and programmed that did that happened you know right. even in our childhood we're still dealing with those programs most of us are right. so why do you think you can just overnight change the programs you know it takes a while to become aware of the subconscious programming most of us are living on autopilot and then just being aware like that we're living on autopilot is a huge step, you know, to be proud right. of. That's right. huge right there. Well, yeah. And awakening is an ongoing process of always learning that we're, we're, we'll never be more enlightened than we are in this moment till the next moment. Yeah. Uh, you know, and, uh, <laughs> or aware or awoken or whatever term that people want to call themselves or, you know, being joy, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a joyous person. I'm full of joy. I'm full of joy. And then, you know, someone you know scratches their car and they rage you know it's like you know yeah you yeah as soon as you get going. tested the first time <laughs> tested you're like yeah it's like 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 we can be home and and be just in this wonderful high vibe but as soon as we go mix it up in the world we're like eh, well that didn't last very long right. but we have to like you know i respect people who get out and like i mean great okay you're a monk strong work i mean we can all be peaceful when we're not around anybody or in the hustle and bustle but the the real test is like you're saying you know do your meditations do all the things to set yourself right. up for success to raise your frequency get a good night's sleep move your body and then go out into the world and chances are really good that something's going to happen like that natural fluctuation you know we're going to respond and, mm -hmm. and, and, and you just got to be okay with it and not right. beat yourself up and be like, you know what, we'll try again tomorrow. Or, you know, you don't have to wait till tomorrow. Like you said. Right. So by the way, if you answered this, I, I forgot and just remind me, but the boss coming in and saying something to throw you off, what would you recommend in that moment? So they're at work. Oh, you, you, the hand on the heart thing. That would be a good one. Okay. Because I was thinking, what can they do right then and there? Something practical. You can do that. You can do it in front of your boss. Ask, ask for space, you know, you know, stand up for yourself. That might not uh, work out with some people. No, but it's going to work out the way that, 
you know, and that's the thing. Like I can't Breathing. give valid, I, I can't give valid advice for someone's situation because everybody's situation is unique. Yeah. Uh, what I, I would say in that moment is trust your intuition. So you can always, you know, um, do what's going to happen. You know, um, um, I, I live by a philosophy that, um, you, you, you change your lifestyle based on your spiritual practice, not your mm -hmm. spiritual practice based on your lifestyle. So, you know, if, if it's not resonating with you in that way anymore, um, take the, the leap of faith and go do something else. Well, um, that, that makes, that makes sense. And, and, and I, but I do think breath work though, I would say yeah. like for me, that's where you can do that anywhere and it works like just breathing. And even if it's just like your, so let's say your boss is yelling at you, just count yeah. your breath four in, right. four out, four in, four in. It's something easy, right. you know, and just, just get back out of your head and back into your body. Yeah. The nice thing about the signal of putting your hand on your heart though, is people that are yelling at you are going to see that you're having a reaction and intuitively um maybe tone probably, it down a bit <laughs> they might shift yeah that's a good um, point you know um and you know i teach breath work i got breath work certified all that stuff um so i totally i mean it's it's one of those tools that we can't live without mm -hmm. um we can do it consciously unconsciously that's the beautiful part about it um and we always have it you know yeah. sometimes you know i i might not carry tuning forks in my pockets or you know, I might have forgot crystals at home that day or, you know, mm -hmm. something along that lines um, to work with. So, you know, it has been one of my my um, intentions of how as I'm, I'm developing my skill sets and stuff like that, like how can we be butt naked, bare naked, bare nothing and still be able to handle the adversities that 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 come up? Mm -hmm. um, because that really shows our strength of character, our resiliency, our willingness to overcome um, challenge and circumstance. Um, and, you know, I think that's what really shows our true nature as human beings um, are, though, is that tenacity. Yeah. Um, you know, and um, and, you know, understanding that this moment might not be what I want, but this moment will lead me to what I'm supposed to get. Um, that's for my highest good. Um, I'm not smarter than the universe, but at the same time, um, uh, the universe, God, whatever, isn't going to do anything for me that I can do for myself. Right. Yeah. You know, um, and, and, you know, um, really leaving it as, as, as simple as, as it can be, you know, trust, trust in the unknown like when you can trust the void in the unknown and not be fr fearful mm -hmm. um man you're powerful I, I agree and and the, some a challenge to myself has been just not like that like letting life unfold <laughs> instead of trying to always figure things out. I'm very analytical. I'm like a quadru quadruple Virgo. I just is what it is, you know, and I just am all in my head a lot. So, but I'm aware of it, you know, and, you know, I have that habit of psychics, you know, I, like I love talking to psychics and stuff. And then I, I realized recently, as you know, my story that sometimes, you know, you can get too much because we, we create our own reality. So when we get advice from an outside source, they're only they're only even able to see possibilities mm -hmm. and what's in your current field. Right. So it's not even real. So it's you know, I'm not I'm not saying don't talk to psychics I mean, if, as long as you're aware of that, because I love talking to psychics. I have a lot of friends who are psychic. As long as you're aware that it's just guidance mm -hmm. and this they're not saying something that's set in stone. They're seeing possibilities. Use it as guidance. And, and, and that's great. But don't internalize things and say, Oh, I'm, this is just what's going to happen. This is how it is. Cause that's not the case at all. You have, right. uh, you have the power at any moment to shift things in your life. Right. Any moment we create our own reality. You are a creator. And I think self-realization is the word I've been using lately instead of the, um, I like that one. So, yeah. So Chris, it has been wonderful talking to you, Chris Alba for, I don't think I have said your la last name when, when I introduced you. But I'm going to have all of Chris's information in the description box. If you're on Facebook, it'll be 
it'll be there. It'll be in on Instagram. And I know um, I'm going to have your website for anyone. And it, and it has all of your, I saw on your website, you've got all the ways people can find you on your other platforms as well, right? Yeah. And yeah I saw that on your website. Yeah, enhancingyourworld.com. Enhancingyourworld.com is Chris's website, but I'm also going to have it for you to click on. And anyone would be lucky to have you as their life enhancement guide, Chris, and their energy healer. So I really hope that the right people find you through this through this um, episode because I think you're yeah. wonderful. And well, thank you. thank you so much. Thank you. And thank you so much for accepting my invitation. Anytime. On the show. Coffee soon, hopefully. Yeah. And, and anyone who's um, coffee soon. Yeah. Yeah. We can meet at our place. Okay. Starbucks. Was that Starbucks? <laughs> <laughs> so that's not a real coffee place, by the way, but you know, we'll, it's we'll not do. real coffee. Maybe we can find a different place. Yeah. So anyone who enjoyed this episode, if you feel like it helped you or you think it might help someone else, you know, please hit like and share it with your friends. And we would love to hear your comments and we will be there to mm -hmm. answer them. So please comment below anything that you can relate to. We would love to hear about it. And until next week, bye everyone.